today I'll be teaching you how you can bypass two-factor authentication. You finally managed to get the password of your friend, coworker, or even Mr. Hackaloy. And now when you log in into the site, you get a pop-up that says, hey, enter the two-factor authentication right now. Well, that is a big problem. But as hackers, we have to find ways to overcome that. So one of the best ways is to just go ahead and hack into the phone so that you get the one-time password too. The other way is to hack into the backend database to uncover that secret value, which allows you to then add it into your own authenticator, providing those one-time password for you too. And before we get started, kids, remember hacking is illegal. Ask your mom for permissions first. So the first thing, of course, is you need a hacker. So in this case, we have Mr. Hacker Law who is going to be running the hack, teaching you exactly what's going on. Next up, you have a website. So in this case, we have a website that we're targeting. And of course, on the back end, there is a database of recorders storing all this different information. So the information we're targeting in this case is called the secret value. And this secret value is a value that we can then use in our own mobile device or in our own authenticator. We insert that value over here. And when we get a pop up for the 2FA, we're able to place that value over into 2FA, allowing us to bypass the authentication. And yes, it is super cool, I know. And right in front of us, we have Color Electronic and we are on a login page. So in this case, we have a target. And of course, you have been watching all of Mr. Hacker's Log's videos. And perhaps you know the password as 1234567 or the password as Mr. Hacker Law is very handsome. So either of these two options, you can try to inject them. So in this case, we have say hacker Loy at hackerloy.com and I can enter the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I click login, guess what? we're able to log right in. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we can go ahead and set up the two-factor authentication. So in this case, there is a generation of a QR code. In reality, QR code are just values that you can then scan it from your phone. So you have two options here. One, you take out your phone, you scan this QR code to get some information from there. Or two, what you can do is do a right click onto the image, click save image as. So in this case, I'm gonna save this as hackerloyqrcode.png, click save. I will replace this file. And what I'll do now is go ahead and analyze the file using a tool. So in this case, we want to extract the value or information out of the QR code. So I'm using in this example, readzbar.python, and I'll go ahead and analyze the file that we have downloaded, hit enter on that, and let's go ahead and do a dot slash on this, hit enter on that again, and boom, we're able to extract the value right here. So we have the following. In this case, we have the value of D4, IC, CJ3, and so on and so forth. And of course, before the end, which is the issuer of OWSP Juice Shop. So now that we've extracted the value, we can go ahead and click add. And in this case, we can either scan a QR code or enter a setup key. So let's go ahead and enter the setup key. So in this case, I'll call this hacker loy hacked. And I'll go ahead and enter the key right here. As you can see here, I've selected onto the account name as well as the key. I click add and boom, we are done. So what I can do now is go back over into the registration of the two-factor authentication. So what we can do now is go ahead and enter the current password. So in this case, we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as the current password or Mr. Hacker Loy could be using Hacker Loy is very handsome as another set of password too. Next up from the generated six digit pin, all I got to do right now is go ahead and enter 189, all right, followed by the following of 297. All right, go ahead and enter that. Click save and boom, we're done. So now we have set up the two-factor authentication or configuration for it. So to show the example of the value that is being stored in a backend database, in this case, we're using SQLite 3. And I'll go ahead and use SQLite 3 target juice shop dot SQLite, hit enter on that. And what I can do now is go ahead and query the tables within this database. So you can go ahead and enter the following of say dot table, hit enter on that. And it shows you all the tables within the database. And in this case, likely, most likely, the information is going to be stored under users table. So let's go ahead and query that. So I can do the following of dot schema users and see what is the schema like. So in this case, we have ID, we have username, we have email and so on and so forth. And the one that is most important for us as part of today's hack is TOTP secret. So now what we can do is go ahead and query that. So I can do this following of select email, all right, comma, TOTP secret from users, all right, where email equal, in this case, we have hacker law at hacker law.com hit enter on that. And this value over here is the same value as the one that we've extracted earlier when we were scanning and extracting value from a QR code image. And you'll be saying like, why didn't I scan a QR code directly from my phone? Well, if I scan directly from my phone, I wouldn't look like a hacker. Now, if the website has a SQL injection vulnerability, I can click under account, I click login. And what I can do now is enter say hacker law at hacker .com. But because of a SQL injection vulnerability, what we are doing here is I can enter whatever password I want to, which is not the actual password. It would still bring us and allow us to log into this user. So what I can do now is go ahead and click login, but boom, we get stopped. 
we get stopped by the two-factor authentication and we do not have the value. So what we need to do is to need to hack into the backend database to extract that value so that we can add it into our own authenticator. So what I've done here, I went to the top right corner of the browser and I've go ahead and set up an interceptor. So in this case, we're using Burp Suite as our interceptor. And when I go over into Burp Suite, you can see right here, we're intercepting under the proxy tab. And right here, we have a specific request to 192.168.0.117. Of course, in the real world, it will be a domain name. So in this case, I can do a right click on this. I can send over to say repeater. And from repeater, you can see right here with get slash RAS product search. So I can enter say Apple and I hit enter on that, when I send it over, we get some results back. So again, as you have understood earlier, it is using a database on the back end. And of course, in return, whatever we search for, it is providing us those values back in JSON. And this specific query has a vulnerability. And as you can see here on the left, we have the payload. So we have a unit select from SQL Light Master. So we're trying to understand the schema, the tables, and all this different information behind the back end database. So I go ahead and click send on this, and you can see right here, okay, we have some error messages. So this is a result of ensuring that we fit into the column that was retrieved for us in order to get back those actual values. At the same time, if you see over here with SQL, select star from products where name like and etc. This, this is the query that is being run by the application against the backend database that we saw earlier. So if you see on the left right now, we have updated the payload a little more. So we have union select SQL 2345678 from SQL Light Master. Go ahead and click send on this and boom, we are done. So if I scroll down further, especially past the first table that is providing us a list of products and all these different values of the products, if you scroll down further over it, it will be able to provide us all the different information information regarding the different tables within the database. So in this case, if I scroll down a little more, you'll be able to see here, we have create table addresses, create table basket items, create table baskets, and so on and so forth. So the one that we're really interested in in this case is going to be under the users, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and go over into the users table. So in this case, we have user ID, carts and complaints, feedbacks. So this gives us an idea about all the tables that we saw earlier when we were directly querying from the database, but that requires that we have access to the operating system. So in this case, let's go over into users, all right? So let's go ahead and search for that. So right here, this is the one that we're targeting. So we have create table users. So same thing that we saw earlier. So we have the password, we have the email. And of course, the one that we're targeting in today's case is going to be TOTP secret. So you can see right here, we have a new set of payload, which is unit select email password user. So we are querying directly into the users table. So when I click send on this, this gives us information again, after we pass the first table of all these different products information, if I scroll down further, we'll be able to see all this different users information. So in this case, we have like J12934, which is admin account at uh, juice shop and so on and so forth. So all these are different information that we're able to retrieve right now. And the one you were targeting in this case is going to be hacker law and hacker And we can see right here, this is the value that we extracted earlier. From the extraction of this value, I can go back over into say Google Authenticator and I can easily add this as an additional value of time-based one-time password setup. So what I can do right now is go ahead and click onto plus, enter a setup key. And so right now what we'll do is enter an account name. So in this case, Hector Hacker Loy. And then after that, go ahead and copy and paste the value right here. Once you're ready, go ahead and click add on this and it would generate all this value for us. So right here we have 089575, but let's give it a second more, get the new generation of six digit pin. Let's enter this 480613. All right, go ahead and turn on Burp Suite. In this case, I'll turn it off right now. I'll click on our account, click login, and go ahead and enter HackerLoy at HackerLoy.com, enter the password, or if you have the SQL injection payload ready, you can do the same, whichever case it is, it brings you over a two-factor authentication token. So right now, if I go back over into Android, all right, 480613, go ahead and click login, just in time, we are now in. We have managed to hack into the account as a result of breaking into the backend database that is storing all this two-factor authenticated shared secret.